In Minecraft is all about the XP and I'm going to show you a way how to get loads. Don't you go anywhere. And we are going to build our XP farm right here on this gorgeous lake surrounded by mountains. And then I'm going to give it to you as a free world download in this best Minecraft 119 seed. Unfortunately, because it uses a little bit of quasi connectivity, this is only going to work in Java edition. I'm really sorry, Bedrockers. This one is not for you. A little while ago, I showed you how to make this awesome Minecraft 119 mob farm which produces loads of mob drops but no XP. We are going to convert this into a Skulk XP farm that gives you so much XP either immediately or as an XP bank for later. So let's get on with it and if while watching the video you enjoy what you see perhaps consider hitting that like button and if you haven't already the subscribe button too. It costs you nothing and it really helps out the channel. Thanks loads. Everything you need for this farm is inside this double chest. The items across the top row of the chest are the number of stacks of that block that you're going to need so 14 stacks of cobblestone four stacks of mangrove stairs for example everything else is the number of actual blocks that you need and you could get away with a lot fewer water buckets if you had an infinite water source for example i've also got some enchanted tools this is an unbreaking three efficiency four hoe that's if you want the xp straight away this is a silk touch version of the same hoe if you want to use it as an xp bank and store the stuff for later we've also got a silk touch pick because we have got a stone generator in this farm which will allow you to replenish all that stone and use the farm forever so let's get out into that water and start making it so the first thing i've done is come out to the middle of this huge lake in a boat and I'm going to place down a lily pad and on top of that I'm going to place a stone block. I'm then going to break off that lily pad and put a cobblestone block underneath the stone block. And I'm going to make a platform of cobblestone. And I've made that platform 31 by 31 blocks. And I'm lining all the way around the outside of it with mangrove steps. And then on top of the outermost piece of cobble, I'm putting another row of steps. I'm then going to put a temporary block on top of that middle block so as I know where it is and I'm going to fill the rest up with more stone. Now you could use any naturally occurring block like dirt or deep slate or even diorite if you wanted to. I'm using stone because it's really easy to generate and replace. And I'm going to place an easy stone generator just off the side of this platform because we're going to want an unlimited number of blocks to be able to use this farm. Because we're going to want to replace this stone over and over again. I'm going to come across this central line so I'm right in the middle. Doesn't have to be. I just like it that way. To do that, I'm going to take out those two central steps. And on the bottom level, I'm going to place a solid block. I'm using mud bricks because I like them. I'm going to come out six, including this one. One, two, three, four, five and six. I'm then going to get a chest. I'm going to place a chest on the cobble. I'm then going to place another chest on the first mud brick to give myself a double chest. I'm then going to grab four hoppers and I'm going to shift click the hoppers into each other and into that chest. That's one, two, three, and four. I've then surrounded those hoppers and the chest in a big long U shape and next to the hoppers I'm going to place four steps facing towards them on each side. I place some mangrove planks at the end of those hoppers because a pick will take a lot longer to go through those planks and you won't accidentally bash out the end and I've put four blocks on each corner. I've placed a temporary block over the end of the chest and I'm then going to place a water bucket on each of these steps to waterlog them. That's going to give me infinite water across all four levels. I have then built up a trough out of more solid blocks and on one of the two middle blocks here I'm going to place a bucket of lava. That lava is going to run across that water and turn each of them into stone. I can then remove this temporary block and you can see underneath there we have got our stone. I'm going to remove this stone block right here to expose the cobble and this is going to be where we do our mining. Just to finish it off I've placed some lower stone brick slabs just to cover up that lava, two lanterns and in a glowing item frame we have got a silk touch pick. That will give us an infinite amount of stone so we can keep this farm going forever and ever. Grab some scaffolding and go up 32 blocks from on top of this temporary block. And around that top scaffolding block you are going to place two temporary blocks in the north, south, east and west directions. And then using a structural block go eight more in each direction. So as it looks like that. Then create a square around those temporary blocks and make a diamond shaped platform around the rest. So it looks like that. Then ring around this area with more temporary blocks and you are going to place a fence gate on each side like this going all the way around until you get to the other side and then you're going to open up those fence gates inwards just like this. 
We then need to come to the, each corner of our diamond and make them five wide. So as it looks like that. And then expand your diamond shape along the edges like this until it eventually looks like that. And then on the outermost block, make yourself a two high wall out of whatever structural block you want to. I'm gonna use mud bricks and also packed mud to give it a little bit of texture. So it should look like that. Come to your center scaffolding and build up four blocks. That's one, two, three, and four. And then come out in each direction with your structural block, another seven blocks. And like before, build out your diamond on each side. So it will look like that. On top of that center block, hit one, two, three, and then using some scaffolding to get up there, a fourth block like that. Come down your scaffolding and get rid of that. You can then get rid of that block completely, that block completely. You can then place a dispenser facing downwards so come right underneath your block, not totally underneath it, but just on the outside and press right on the edge so that faces downwards and then get rid of that block and get an observer and face that again right on the edge so that faces downwards. So if you look on top, you've got the face of the observer right there. Now the face of that observer is gonna form this platform. It's this temporary block. So we're gonna come out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in each direction. We're also gonna lose that temporary block and replace it with a normal block. So it looks like that. Observe it in the middle and seven more blocks in each direction. Before climbing up to finish this next platform, come to your dispenser, place a water bucket right in the middle of that there, and then come up with a couple of scaffolds just like that, come up to the top of your area and turn this into another diamond. Before you place the block that covers over the scaffolding, break them both off and then you can place your block just like that. And repeat this until you've got eight platforms. Top tip, as you build these, create yourself a pillar of scaffolding from this bottom layer. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Once all eight of your platforms are in place, come right up to the top so you can see the underside of the top platform. And once you're there, shift click a lever on the side of that dispenser and throw it so as it dispenses the water. Remove that lever. You should find that all the platforms have now got water like that. But for absolute best effect, what you really want is three of the platforms with water and three of the platforms without water. So we're just gonna do that now. Come down to the next layer and again, using shift click, place a lever on the side and switch it off. That's gonna switch everything underneath of it off as well. Remove that lever. What you should now have, because of some strange quasi redstone weirdness, you should have the second, the fourth, and the fifth platforms all with no water, and the top one, the third one, and the bottom two with water. If you haven't got that, then just go down to the next level and switch these platforms on and off so as you've got about half of them with water and half of them without. We're then gonna build out this top platform so it's the same size as the bottom tray, which means we have to come out one, two, three, and then come out two on each side like this and create the same size diamond as that bottom tray that you can see just down there. So it should look like that with the observer right in the middle and the scaffolding showing so you can escape. Although from here, you can throw yourself off the side and hit the water down below if you take a running jump. Then choose any direction. I'm gonna choose this direction and next to the observer, but not on it, place a repeater and then run those repeaters all the way along until you are too short of the edge of your platform and then turn around and come all the way back again until you are too short at the end of the platform and then run them all the way back again, but not onto the observer face. You then want to right click on them three times so they all go to the four tick position like this. At one end, I want you to place two pieces of redstone like that so that connects the repeaters. And at the other end, I want you to place a block from the repeaters that are traveling towards the block and in the side of that block, a redstone torch like that. That's gonna send a redstone signal up to, but not over that observer face right there. This is the clock that is gonna update our water in the entire farm. When I place a redstone piece on top of that observer face, it's gonna update it and send a signal all the way down the entire tower. And where there's water now, it will go dry. And where there's dryness, it will get wet and push any mobs that are on those platforms off into our capture chamber. So let's place one piece of redstone right there. That completes the circuit. You can hear all the clicking going down the tower. The circuit continues to go all the way around until it hits this block. That block then gets charged, turns off that redstone torch, comes along, 
updates that redstone again and then changes that tower of water and it will continue to do that now forever and ever and then come to the side of that observer one block and then another block and place an entire stack 64 of scaffolds and right at the very top surrounding that top scaffold place a three by three square and then a two block gap and another three by three square above it place a lantern on one of the corners this is your afk spot now come back down to the roof of your phone and you are going to want to place torches up here to make sure none of it is spawnable the worst thing you want is all of your mobs spawning on top of your platform and not inside your farms just make sure everything is above light level zero I have totally overdone that, but better too much than not enough. Then come down a couple of blocks for your scaffolding right here, and then knock the blocks out and replace that mud brick right there, and then come all the way to the bottom of this scaffolding stack. Once you're at the bottom, you can get rid of all of that scaffolding and collect it up as it falls on your head. If it falls on any of those platforms, the water will eventually wash it off. You are then gonna remove these temporary blocks as well, all the way around like this, but leave one path so as you can still get to that scaffold right there. You are then gonna take water and place it on the second level of the wall. So not this block here, but this block here. And you're gonna place one on every single block. So as it looks like that. If you come with two water buckets, place one in the corner of this five long side and one in the center of this five long side, it will make an infinite water source between them so you can keep refilling your buckets. You don't have to come with a thousand buckets. Once all your water is in, come to the center of your farm across your big hole and walk over to the scaffolding along this little pathway of temporary blocks that you left yourself. Remove the two temporary blocks and come all the way back down on your scaffold. Now, once you're at the bottom, this bit is a little bit weird. On the side of the scaffolding one two three high come out four blocks on each side then on the fifth block place some kind of structural block again it doesn't matter which one you use I'm just using this packed mud here because it's kind of in keeping with the rest of the build and then place a lantern hanging down underneath that packed mud just like that you can then get rid of those temporary blocks like that and you're going to build yourself up a little network of light to keep this base lit up without actually putting any lights down on top of the base. That will keep that entire platform above light level zero so no mobs are going to spawn on it. You can then take out that scaffolding and allow it to fall all the way down to collect up for use another time. And you are then going to replace that temporary block that's been there that whole time with a skulk catalyst block. And it is this skulk catalyst that is going to convert all of those dead mobs into XP for you that you can either take immediately or store up like an XP bank to use whenever you need it. Next, come to your stone generator, assuming that you put it in the middle. If not, then come to the middle of one of your sides and then look forwards until you see your first lantern and on the block just in front of that lantern place yourself a scaffolding and then place scaffolding all the way up to the top of your farm that is how you're going to get up and down to your afk spot from the ground and it's also how we are going to light proof this farm we've got to make sure that no light is inside that farm at all it needs to be light level zero now there's a couple of ways in which you can do that i'm going to use this really awesome tinted glass but that is quite expensive, I do appreciate that. So you can use any block you want, any opaque block. You can continue using mud bricks or stone bricks or something like that. But I like this one because I like to be able to have a little peek inside. Climb up your scaffolding to the top of your too high wall, the water tray at the bottom of your farm. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna create a wall of tinted glass or other structural block all the way around your farm. And you're gonna carry on doing that all the way to the roof, right the way up there. So it should look like that. And you could start to get the odd mob spawn, but really you need to get up to the AFK spot. So let's go and do a little bit of AFK in and see what happens. So we are at the top of our AFK and I'm gonna wait for just a little bit of time to see what happens downstairs. And while I'm up here, the mobs are starting to form on the platforms of the farm and be pushed down to the hole at the bottom where they rain down around that skulk catalyst which uses the energy from their deaths to bubble the skulk energy through all of that stone, transforming it into skulk blocks, skulk veins, skulk sensors and skulk shriekers all of which store up that xp waiting for you to come and collect it now i've been up here for just 20 minutes so let's go back down and see what's there getting down is easy it's just two flights of scaffold 
And as we come down this second load of scaffolding, it looks very much to me like we have covered the entirety of our platform with Skulk and other bits and pieces. Yep, we have got sensors and shriekers going mad and a load of drops here too. Don't worry about those Skulk Shriekers. They can't summon the Warden because they're not natural Shriekers. Only the natural Shriekers that you find in the Deep Dark can do that. They are still quite noisy though. I also do appreciate that you're gonna lose a number of drops through despawning and they are gonna pull at the bottom of your farm. So this farm might not be suitable for some servers. Maybe a solution to that is to come down every five minutes or so. I reckon there'll be loads of Skulk only after that little bit of time. Now, in addition to Silky, the Silk Touch pick that we've got for our stone generator, we've also got Softy, which is a Silk Touch hoe, and also Bashy, which is a not Silk Touch hoe. Both of which have got unbreaking and efficiency four on to make things as fast as possible. If you want to store up your XP like an XP bank, then use the Silk Touch hoe. Store up all the blocks, and when you're ready for the XP, just lay them down and bash them out with a normal hoe, and you'll find you get loads and loads. Although, if you need that XP right now, all you need to do is use a standard hoe. I do recommend it have an unbreaking and some efficiency on it just to get through this stuff fast. That's what we're going to do now. Let's find out how much XP this single run will give us. So I'm in survival mode with exactly zero experience. And I'm gonna take Bashy here and see what we can't get with all the XP that we've got here. Just start bashing it all out every single last piece. And that entire platform has given me 28 and a little bit levels of experience. And I reckon given that that platform was so full, it's gonna be less than 20 minutes that's got me that. Now all I need to do is put Bashi back and come out and grab a load of this stone and replenish my platform. And we are ready for another session. You'll see that you do get some mobs spawning in there whilst you are down on the platform as well and they'll start this thing off too. But you're much better being up on the AFK platform. And there you have one really easy, big, skulk-powered XP farm with almost no redstone really in it whatsoever. None of this really complicated stuff. It's really simple to put together. And if you follow that tutorial, you are gonna have loads of XP in no time. Let me know in the comments below any other tutorials you'd like me to do. And I'll look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.